OK, even though we currently have a completely automatic key with the strength set to 100%, you can still use the color selection tools to attempt to improve the key. This key is already quite good, but let's see how they work. First, set the view to matte to better see the results of your changes. Now, in the chroma wheel, change the size of the large pie slice by dragging on either edge of the outer graph. If you make the pie slice larger, you include more colors to be keyed out, which starts to key out our talent. If you make the pie slice more narrow, you are reducing the colors included in the key, potentially increasing the areas that are solid or white in the matte view. Notice that you can't make the outer graph range smaller than the inner graph. In this case, our changes have little impact on the matte. Press Command-Z a few times to undo the changes. Notice that you can also drag the black dot at the center of the wheel out to expand the pie slice, adding more colors to the key, which starts to key out the center of our shot. Or you can drag it in to make the pie slice smaller, removing colors from the key. By cutting some of these lower saturation colors out, the mat gets thicker, introducing some more detail in the hair and the glass. However, you'll want to switch to the composite view to make sure that this actually looks better. In this case, although it adds detail to the hair, it also introduces more fringing. So let's press Command-Z a few times to undo that change. Next to the chroma wheel is a keyframe icon, along with the standard menu for working with keyframes. So the settings you make to the wheel can be keyframed to change over time. Below and to the left of the chroma wheel is a small box which indicates the chroma roll-off curve. This curve shows how smoothly or sharply the key transitions from keyed colors to non-keyed colors. You change the curve by adjusting the chroma roll-off parameter down here. Notice how dragging right on the slider increases the curve in the graph. It also starts to eat into the hair detail in the mat, so let's leave it at zero. Also below the chroma wheel is the luma graph. Luma, or luminance, is the other component of color. Every pixel in an image can be described in terms of its hue, saturation, and luminance. You've already seen how you can choose the hue and saturation values that are included in the key by using the chroma wheel. To select the luminance or brightness values that are included in the key, you use the lumograph. Only the lower handles of the lumograph are available when the graph mode is set to scrub boxes. These handles control the edge transparency of the mat. The handles can extend outside the bounds of the box because the keyer effect works in floating point precision. To bring the handles into view, drag horizontally on the sloping curve. Since those adjustments make the mat less smooth, undo them. To adjust the shape of the luma curve without moving the handles, use the luma roll-off slider. Notice that the automatic key set it to 10%. If you increase the value, it seems to cut back on the matte edges. Reducing it seems to increase the edge detail. It's subtle, but it does seem to add more hair detail back, so let's leave it at zero. Next is the Fix Video checkbox, which is checked by default. When enabled, it turns on subpixel smoothing, which can help when keying compressed video codecs. If your key looks better with it off, then turn it off. Here, the smoothing helps the key, so we'll leave it on. Let's now look at our second scenario, adjusting a key that you created using the sample color and edge tools. Switch back to the composite view. As you've seen in the Dynapep key, if you aren't happy with the automatic results, you can sample areas of your image to be keyed. But first, we need to reduce the strength parameter, since it's set to 100%, which means 100% of the automatic key is being used. As you drag down on the slider, Keep an eye on the chroma wheel. You'll see both the outer and inner graphs shrink as you reduce the influence of the automatic key. Drag it all the way to zero to start with a completely unkeyed image. Now, instead of clicking on the sample color and edge tiles to select them, we'll use keyboard shortcuts. In the viewer, hold down the shift key and drag out a box on the green screen near the talent's hair to create the core mat. Notice how the chroma wheel updates to show your selection. Add another box near the top right where the green screen is darker. 
Note that you could garbage mat out this area rather than trying to add it to the key, but in this case, adding it to the key actually removes more of the white fringing around the hair. Now hold down the Command key and drag an edge line from inside her hair to outside, and then adjust the handles and the midpoint slider to improve the key. Notice as you adjust it how the chroma wheel and the lumograph are both updating to reflect your changes. Try adjusting the graph in the chroma wheel to improve the key. You'll probably find that it's hard to improve on the job done with the sample color boxes and the edges line. Try adjusting the luma curve and the luma roll-off here as well. Here too, it's tough to make the mat better. Let's close the color selection tools. There's still some white fringing on the talent's hair, so let's see how we can address that as we explore the other three advanced controls, mat tools, spill suppression, and light wrap. Open the mat tools. Here, you have even more control over your mat. However, in practice, it can be difficult to improve your mat and easy to make it worse. The level sliders let you adjust the contrast of the mat, making edges more solid or translucent. Dragging the black point slider right removes hair detail from our mat and makes it worse. Let's undo that. But dragging the white point slider left seems to bring back some of the lost detail. So let's set it to about 0.78. While we're still in the composite view, Try out the Shrink Expand, Soften, and Erode sliders. I find that for this key, all they do is make it worse, so undo any changes. Close the Mat Tools and open Spill Suppression. As opposed to the Spill Level parameter above, which adjusts how much magenta color to add to the matte edges to counteract green spill, the Spill Suppression controls adjust the contrast, hue, and saturation of the spill color. I find the spill contrast tool is great for eliminating fringing that the sampling tools could not. Drag the white point slider left until the white fringing around the talent's hair disappears. Try adjusting the tint and saturation sliders to see if they improve the skin tone on the talent. I find the current settings are best. Close the spill suppression tools and open the light wrap section. Light Wrap can help a keyed subject blend in more naturally with the background by incorporating some of the background luminance into the edges of the key. Increase the amount slider all the way. Then take the intensity down to about 50% and the opacity to about 50%. One problem with Light Wrap is that it affects the keyed subject where they meet the frame. Increase the intensity again to see this more clearly along the bottom of the viewer. To fix this, you would need to use a similar procedure to what you did with the Dynapep project. Duplicate the keyed clip as a connected clip, remove the key from the top copy, and crop the top copy down to just the area where the subject meets the frame. For here, let's just reduce the intensity until the edge isn't affected, to about 20%. Close the light wrap section. You now have what seems to be a very nicely keyed shot by setting a couple of color and edge samples, adjusting the matte contrast and the spill contrast. Switch back to the matte view. You may still have some of the green screen showing in the top right corner. To take care of that, add the mask effect to the clip. Use the on-screen controls to adjust the mask Increase the feather amount to soften the edges of the mat. and then switch back to the composite view.